Oh hi everyone, I am finally back from my summer holiday, back from basking on balmy beaches, back from tickling the sea turtles, all of which of course is documented on my Instagram. If you wish to follow me, I am at John T. My followers are privy to my handy life hacks, quick wit, and close encounters with death. But anyhow, on my return to England, I was looking for something more silly, a silly story, something more lighthearted to make a video on, because recently I've been, I've been tied up making videos on neural networks international cybercrime and Facebook vying for international monetary domination. And courtesy of one Luke on Twitter, I feel like I may have finally found something stupid, something funny, something silly, which seriously segues into a much more important subject. So I was linked to this Twitter thread and it perfectly presents everything wrong with security in some of the most massive companies in 2019. And, and it's actually kind of scary what you're about to see. So, so buckle your seatbelts. You see, Freaky Clown here, Mr. Freaky Clown, forgot his Virgin Media password. Now, Virgin Media, once you've had your obligatory obligatory laugh, is an ISP here in the UK. It's one of the main ones and it's actually, it's actually pretty decent. Now, he forgot his Virgin Media password. And instead of being emailed a password reset link, they sent him his password in plain text in the mail. And by mail, I mean post, as in snail mail as in with an envelope and a stamp on it, as in on a piece of paper, like, like this. Now you might think after reading through this Twitter thread that they'd see the error of their ways. If I were them, I'd, I'd just be a bit embarrassed. Though after reading through the thread, I'd quietly see my mistake, probably delete my tweet, and just get on with things, fix the problem, and just go on as normal. But no, of course they didn't. That would have been way too sensible. They doubled down. They claimed sending passwords in the mail, in plain text, is secure as, and this is a big brain moment, so wait for it. It's illegal to open someone else's mail. Oh dear, oh dear. Somehow Virgin Media has ascended to an echelon of pure intellectual majesty. Virgin Media basking in layers of palatial wisdom. This is, this is just unheard of. It's, it's a double whammy. Storing passwords in plain text and then and then posting them in the mail, thinking it's secure on the pretext that it's illegal for someone else to open your mail. Now, it didn't take long for some very diligent Twitter users to let Virgin Media know that, that criminals generally have a habit of not following the law. Now, strange, I know, crazy, but that's the way it usually turns out. Someone responded with Virgin Media's actual password policy. And <laughs> this isn't made up. Their passwords must be between eight and 10 characters in length. Because of course, a password that's 11 characters, well, that would just be obscene. That would just be ridiculous. Why would you do that? 11 characters? But I digress. For the rest of this video, I want to look at other tech tycoon cockups. I want to delve into other bad ways of storing passwords and how you can tell if you've fallen victim to a database breach. But not before we get to today's sponsor, me. So soon a lot of you, and I know a lot of you, I look at those analytics, a lot of you will be going back to school. And that means filling up that pencil case with everything that's gone missing from it over the past year. Well, it just so happens that my website, maltronics.com, now sells a ruler. Perfect for your pencil case. 20 centimeters long, it is gold plated, it's made from the same stuff as circuit boards themselves, and it even has a little protractor watts built in. Ain't that nifty? Look at that. I named him Ruly McRuleface, after Maltronics' new mascot, Snakey McSnakeface. Check him out in the description, Maltronics.com, where we do sell a lot of other cybersecurity related gear. And yeah, I just think it's pretty cool, pretty nifty. Check him out. So just one of the ways you can tell if your passwords are being stored in plain text by a certain website is when you hit that forgot password button. Now, if your password is sent to you in an email verbatim, then you know that your password is being stored in plain text. Though most of the time, the fact that your password is stored verbatim will remain a mystery until a database leak comes along and everything comes trickling out like some god-awful curry from the night before. Ooh. So what's the deal with storing passwords verbatim? Why is this a bad idea? Well, as I just mentioned, data breaches happen. Every now and then, hackers somehow manage to finagle their way into places where the sun don't shine, exposing databases full of passwords. Now, this wouldn't 
really be too much of an issue if people would have unique passwords for every website they used, though unfortunately 51% of people reuse passwords. And that's not surprising. In fact, I think that's a bit of a low estimate. So because these passwords are reused, if you know someone's Twitter password, there's a good chance you know their Reddit password, the password to their email account, and of course once you're in their email account, you basically have everything, right? So these databases can be quite valuable. Often they're sold and bought on the dark web for, well, money. Though a lot of the time they do find their way into public circulation, so it can be quite easy to tell if your email password combo has been leaked. And trust me, chances are it has at some point. Now there's a website we can go to, it's called haveibeenpwned.com. So the idea is, is that you put your email address in here and they'll cross-reference it with a bunch of leaked password databases. And if your email is in one of these databases, well, it's been leaked, so change your password. So I'll try it here with an old an old email address that I no longer use. And non not, not surprisingly, there are about five breaches here from services I've used. So yeah, yeah, these, this all just sounds about right. And there's two here which are just aggregations of other password databases which have been leaked. So this isn't really too surprising. If you have an email address which is a few years old and you've used it on a bunch of things, chances are it's gonna have been hacked at one point. Now luckily, I use different passwords for all of my accounts, so this isn't too much of an issue. Though I do wanna try one of my more recent email addresses. What? <laughs> I don't really know how to how to come back from this one. It's it's been a while. I you know I've I've done some things in my life I'm not too not too proud of, and this this is one of them. Though, you know I wouldn't mind playing a bit now. To be fair, Club Penguin. Luckily for you, I need Flash Player, which I don't have, so we're going to skip the Club Penguin for for, for today at least. So bad password storage practices aren't just limited to obscure British ISPs. Facebook. That's right, Facebook has done the same too. It came out in March of this year that Facebook had stored the passwords of 600 million users in plain text since 2012. So that's a good seven years this, had, this has just gone under the radar. Now, luckily in this case, there was no breach of this database. It remained within Facebook. However, it was visible to 2,000 employees and all it takes is one disgruntled employee to cause a catastrophe. However, Facebook says that these passwords were not improperly accessed at any point. However, we just have to take their word for that. There has been no independent um, investigation into this whatsoever, so we'll never know for sure. It's not just Facebook, of course. Twitter and GitHub have done exactly the same thing. That's right, Twitter and GitHub. In both cases, passwords were properly stored, and I think even in Facebook's case, these passwords were hashed, they were stored properly, securely, and everything. However, an internal logging system in the back end of these websites somehow felt the need to log the password in transit for some reason. So the plain text password was logged by these systems and just sat there in logs for years. And they're not the only ones. Google, Google in fact, since 2005, have been storing certain passwords in plain text since 2005. Now, this did only apply to G Suite customers. By the way, this came out only a couple of months ago. It, it, it did only apply to G Suite customers, so you're probably fine. Hey, I use, I use G Suite. So a bug allowed these passwords to be stored within the G Suite admin console in plain text. So any administrator of a certain company would have been able to view these passwords. Though, of course, this is now fixed, or, or so they say. So the real question is, is why do some of these massive companies that surely have enough money to spend into, you know, storing passwords properly, why do they make this mistake? Or do they just not care about security? Well, some of them probably just don't care about security. They're just not bothered. Well, from a pure business perspective, it's understandable. If there is a breach, you just need an injection of some decent PR, a few words about how you're suddenly taking security really seriously and how it's important to you and how you're changing your practices for the better. And let's be real, you probably won't lose any customers. So it's not that big of an issue to them. Another reason I suppose is upgrading from one security system to another would be a bit of a pain. Likely you'd have to get all your customers to reset their passwords or set them again. 
unless you want multiple passwords databases floating around, which sound terrible. But probably the most pragmatic answer to this is that these sites can be so big, so complex, that when everything's been running for a while, it's easy to assume that there just aren't any problems under the hood. Until, of course, something does go south and there's no one to blame because the guy that set up your password policy 10 years ago no longer works at the company. Now, if you want to find out more about how passwords should be properly stored, what a hash is, what a salt, what a pepper is, check out one of my previous videos. It's one of my more ancient videos at this point. I will link it in the description. And that talks about how passwords are properly stored, which is, which is really quite important. So thank you for watching this video, guys. Let me know what you thought in the comments. Remember to give it a like if you liked it. Subscribe if you haven't already. And as always, stay tuned for more hacking videos. Have a good one.